Before I begin my message this morning, I want to uh, just share with you a, a, a prayer of thanks um, this week uh, for the Belleville Fire Department. On Wednesday, for those of you who are here, you know that our elevator quit working after all of our outreach luncheon participants were downstairs, which included one gentleman in a, in a scooter, electric scooter, and two in wheelchairs. And there was no way that they, we were going to get them up after lunch. So we called the fire department, and they came and uh, helped with a, a lift at 1 o'clock to get those participants uh, out of the hall and on their way home. And on your behalf, my daughter and I dropped off a case of homemade preserves um, to them. <laughs> now, the, the fire chief said, do I have to share them? <laughs> um, but uh, so thanks have gone their way for their assistance on Wednesday. Jesus said there will be signs in the sun the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know the kingdom of God is near. My words for you this morning, this message called Waiting, been informed from excerpts from Frederick, Frederick Bigner's Secrets in the Dark, and uh, an awesome theologian and, that he is. Now, I don't know any other passage in the gospel that's harder to understand and feel our way through than these verses from Luke 21. How do we respond to them? How do we respond to these words from Jesus about the second coming? He's speaking about the end of the world and about the coming of the kingdom of God as the climatic last act of history. And he is speaking in words and images as foreign to our whole way of thinking as his subject itself. He says, as the day approaches, there will be great cosmic upheaval with signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and the powers of heaven themselves shall be shaken. Now, does he mean there will be real eclipses and strange comets that we've never seen before? Maybe a reordering of the constellations themselves to scrawl some fateful starlit message from the night sky? Or is he speaking symbolically of some upheaval, not of the world without, but of the world within? An upheaval of the heart's and minds and spirits of the human race. The seas will go wild, he says, and at their roaring, the nations will be terrified by whatever is happening or will happen. And then, most extraordinary of all, as the cause and climax of everything that has preceded it, the Son of Man will appear in a cloud with power and with great glory. It's a tough message to get your head around, but maybe we simply need to simplify it. I think we are simply waiting, regardless of that apocalyptic message. I think that's what is at the heart of this reading. Even if we don't know what we are waiting for, I think we are waiting. Even when we can't find the words to describe what we are waiting for, I think we are waiting. 
an ancient Advent prayer supplies us with these words. Give us grace, it says, that we may cast off the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. We who live much of the time in darkness are waiting, not just at Advent, but at all times for the advent of light, of that ultimate light that is redemptive and terrifying at the same time. It is redemptive because it puts an end to the darkness, and that is also why it may be terrifying, because for so long, for all our lives, the darkness has been home, and because to leave home is always cause for fear. And so we begin today the lighting of our Advent candle to recognize the coming of the light. Even as the days grow shorter, the Christ's light will be among us. Now, I think there's different kinds of waiting, and I'm going to give you three examples this morning. You're standing in the line at the post office of the grocery store, waiting for your turn. You're tapping your foot. You're looking at your watch. You don't want to be in this line. Before long, you begin to think, I can't wait till this is over. Oftentimes, the people in line with you feel the same way. And no one speaks to anyone else, unless you're my husband who talks to everyone. (laughs) Oftentimes, the other people in, in, in line just look straight ahead as if there's no one else there. Clearly few are enjoying the experience. The impatience or irritability you feel might even be visible on your face. Such an experience of waiting in line can seem isolating, almost lonely. Second example. Now think about the times when you've waited at line in an amusement park to buy tickets or to buy tickets to see your favorite baseball team, or to hear your favorite band. In these instances, the waiting is much different. People are excited. And you might even be talking to some of them about the ride you're getting on ready to experience, or the sports team you love to watch, or the band you're about to hear. This second example is the kind of waiting we are called to in that advent. During Advent, we wait in joy, in hope, and in anticipation of a wonderful event we are about to experience, the Feast of Christmas, the coming of Christ into our lives in new ways, the return of Christ in glory, as our scripture says. As the church... We wait during Advent and look forward to celebrating the fact that God loves us so much that God sent the Christ child into the world for each one of us. And this waiting is far from empty. It is full of the hope that God promises us as we prepare for Christ in the Feast of Christmas. So to wait for Christ to come in his fullness is just not a passive thing, a pious, prayerful, churchly thing. On the contrary, to wait for Christ to come in his fullness is above all else an act as one of Jesus' followers as fully as we know how. We wait, but not in silence or in quiet or in stillness. We wait simply by being Christ's hands and feet and ears and eyes in our world every day. As we begin Advent, we wait. God, we come to you in our waiting. We wait with our fears, our anxieties and frustrations, our pains and regrets, our shame and confusion. God, help us to wait in peace. We wait with impatience. We rush around preparing for the festivities 
not leaving the space to prepare our hearts. God, help us to wait in faith. We wait in excitement. We are ready to celebrate. We know the story with its humbleness, simplicity, and wonder. God, help us to nurture our joy. We wait in thanksgiving. We are free and able to celebrate, and we have others around us to share in the journey. We are able to wonder in the marvel of your gift. God, help us to receive your love. Amen.